previously on Millennial Model Mayhem. Well, I guess I still have a lot of work to do. Hello people, my name is Liam, and welcome to the Millennial Model Mayhem Content Zone. Today I am continuing my quest to share how I find joy through expressing my creativity with models and miniatures. I'm going to be working on my 100 Kingdoms and Spires army for the tabletop wargame Conquest by Parabellum Games. This project has been a long work in progress, and this video might just be the most personal one I've uploaded to date. Well, as personal as I can get in this parasocial op- By the Emperor, he's already getting off topic. I've been lying to you. Despite making all these videos about FOMO, imposter syndrome, burnout, procrastination, I'm still having a bit of a hard time. Don't worry about this being a resignation video though, I'm not quitting or anything like that. Am I bad at following my own advice? Keep watching and you'll find out. There's bound to be both relevant and entertaining points for people from all backgrounds. Now it's time to get to work on those armies. If you've watched my channel before, you've likely heard me talk profusely about how much my work is influenced by my enjoyment of tabletop games. The best articulation of my history of using my models and miniatures for gaming was said in the video I released in November last year, which I recommend watching. This channel's focus has mostly remained on the painting and kitbashing side of things, but that hasn't stopped me from selfishly continuing to find ways to bring in those oh-so-nerdy talking points. By watching this video, you can clearly see that this is more than evident. In fact, I've had a revelation this year that trying to suppress that aspect of my personality for the sake of making more concise and consistent content actually feels pretty bad. Like with that tabletop gaming video from last year, I knew ahead of time that it was likely not going to do as well as previous videos because it wasn't about hand-painted gunpla. I knew the importance of my channel's consistency, but I also felt that it was important for me to share my personal perspective and experience. My genuine expression of how I explore and share creativity through models and miniatures isn't consistent. It's chaotic. Model mayhem, you could say. And trying to fit it into the specific boxes encouraged by platforms just doesn't work. I can understand and break down all the facts about the system and myself, but I can't turn my feelings off. When a project does big numbers, it feels great, and when it doesn't, it feels kinda bad. The content creator industry is full of contradictions that bring on a lot of cognitive dissonance. And at a certain point I realized I was manifesting self-sabotaging behaviors in the back of my mind. I know this is coming across as pretty negative, but I felt the need to say these things for a while now. I don't regret taking the path that I did back in 2020, because I've learned so many useful things, and now I've found solace in the revelation that I don't desire the popularity and success that I might have had at the beginning of my time as a content creator. At the end of the day, I'm complaining from a position of privilege, but again, I can't turn my feelings off, so it's better to process them rather than repress them. But to circle back to that tabletop gaming video, I'm still really proud of what I made there, and with all the tabletop gaming I've integrated into my work in general. In fact, the main reason I haven't crashed and burned completely at this point is because I decided to change my routine and deep dive into Conquest with the armies I've been working on for this video. I'm like Guts from Chapter 278 of Berserk, realizing that I have to give up the constant struggle of a seemingly impossible goal for a new and unknown future. Oh, there he goes referencing Berserk again. Fine then, if you don't like it, I'll just reference another anime. I'm taking notes from what the Puppet Master said to Motoko and Ghost in the Shell. Attempting to remain the same will only limit me within this dynamic environment. Okay, I get it. Sorry. I've seen Evangelion. I understand the hedgehog's dilemma. No good will come for me totally cutting myself off from everybody. This is what I do, Kyle. I'm millennial. I model. I'm fake jarring anime references. I praised Conquest in my recent video about kitbashing for the way the character retinue mechanic provides a great excuse to kitbash. 
so check that video out if you're looking for kit bashing tips, also tips on dealing with imposter syndrome. But back to this video, I just can't stop kit bashing. Since that video, I've transformed these two spare Steel Legion soldiers, as well as five more regular infantry models, into various retinue for my Hundred Kingdoms army. I also decided to swap my Mounted Noble Lord's Lance and Shield for a fancy Steel Legion sword. Of course, I couldn't leave my slightly smaller Spire's army without some unique retinue models, so three bound clones were transformed for the same purpose. Forearms is my favorite of the bunch, but the other two serve the double purpose of being good representations for the Infiltrator and Marksman variant for the High Clone Executor character. Beyond kit bashing, another way to unlock some creativity with Conquest that I saw others doing online was to make custom scenic bases for your characters for when they don't have any retinue accompanying them to the battlefield. Because the aesthetic looks slightly off when one of the stands in a regiment has some empty spots. Side note, these decorative rocks from Ikea have been one of my most useful modeling purchases over the past few years. Highly recommend them. With a combination of these rocks, cork, and my usual sand combo, I made one of these for each of my armies to enter the battlefield with all the characters being suitably based at all times. Speaking of battlefields, in my last video I talked about conventions and how they can be a fun time, but only if you know how you'll personally enjoy it. I recommend checking that out to hear my proper thoughts on the matter. When I was at the UK Games Expo, I ended up hanging out with the makers of Conquest, Parabellum Games, as well as some friendly local players, and it turned out that there was another gaming convention called GameCon Canada being held in my hometown in June that they were going to have a booth at. So I ended up joining their Vanguard program and working with their team for a weekend in June to help run demos, talk about the game, and just continue hanging out and having a good time with Conquest. Before I talk about GameCon Canada though, I wanted to say that I remain emboldened by the support I get from everyone who engages positively with my work. I have gotten plenty of great feedback from those of you watching who really appreciate my specific brand of model mayhem. And beyond that, it's still bamboozling to think of the amount of reach I've gotten with my niche content in the first place. And I'll be forever grateful for that. So thank you for the continued support and patience, no matter how long it takes for me to share my projects, or how far the subject matter meanders. Now, let's hear what my fellow Vanguard Cody and some new players had to say about Conquest at GameCon Canada. I've been a Vanguard now for a couple years. Haven't you been a Vanguard like since, or you've been playing Conquest since the very beginning? Pretty well since the very beginning, uh, around 2019 or so. Nice, and why do you like Conquest so much? What's convinced you to commit so much time and energy to it? Uh, what convinced me really was the playability styles uh, between the two games. The you go, I go system with the activations, the larger scales of the models, even the stories behind the models themselves is fantastic and it's so lore driven that it just kind of sucks you in when you get into it. Yeah, the combination of really good models, but also like really good and compelling lore definitely gets me in the same way. Just played a demo, uh, well, frankly, almost a full game yeah. of uh, Last Argument of Kings with Conquest. Yeah. What'd you think? I really liked it. I haven't played a regiment game before. I really liked the rank and file. I enjoyed the actual two actions, so you have to actually make the decisions on that. And what did you think? Uh, was this your very first game of Conquest? Absolute first game. Uh, had a blast, absolute blast. Like already just the little tactical wheels are turning and things I could have done differently and yeah, no, absolute blast. Now I committed all this time and energy to the convention knowing full well that it would take away from the work I logically should be doing for my YouTube channel's growth. But again, I actively chose the more personally fulfilling path. I'm glad I did because it was a great experience that led to many improvements in my life. Plus, I got to fully immerse myself in Conquest for a weekend through running demos, discussing lore, appreciating all the models from other factions that I don't have, and more. Conquest is a fantastic rank and file fantasy war game, and I've genuinely enjoyed all the time I've spent playing the game and working with the minis. Parabellum isn't sponsoring this video, but I do have an affiliate link in the description and pinned comment if you're interested in the game yourself. Code MMMAYHEM saves 10% and helps me earn a living. In the aftermath of GameCon Canada, I took it upon myself to organize weekly conquest nights at my local game store, which have been successfully running for a few months now. 
Parabellum was kind enough to leave two of the demo armies brought to GameCon Canada with some reinforcements behind to live at the local game store, and while getting them ready, I naturally found an excuse to make a kit bash for both the Wadroon and Old Dominion armies. I truly yearned for the return of some kind of recurring community meetup again, as I hadn't really had that since 2019. So having this new responsibility to organize that was actually something I was really looking forward to. It's been extremely gratifying to see more and more people build up and paint their own unique armies, and turns out that socializing through shared interests is good for you actually. Perhaps even more valuable than a paycheck. Now that I've explained why and how I've gotten so into Conquest over the past few months, I'm going to be focusing on finishing my Spire's army. The mindset with army painting is quite different from painting a larger model, even within those two mindsets, so you can approach them both with varying degrees of speed versus quality. I tend to focus on painting my minis faster because there are typically a lot more of them, and then when working on something like a Gunpla project, I slow down a bit and take my time on the fine details. Since I have two conquest armies to work on that present a fairly large pile of grey to work through, I'm designating the 100 Kingdoms army as the one I'll put a bit more time and effort into, and have the Spires army focus on being painted faster to a reasonable tabletop quality level as they say in the biz. The organic textures present across the Spires army lend themselves quite nicely to a lot of dry brushing, so it was a pretty straightforward decision to make. I've said before that when I first saw the Spires faction, I wasn't a huge fan, but as I've been slowly collecting them over the past years, they've quickly grown to become some of my favorite designs from any war game. In my opinion, the point of army painting isn't for each model to be an impressive piece in and of itself, it's for the collection as a whole to look consistent enough to become greater than the sum of its parts. Another difference between painting larger display models versus miniature armies is the greater emphasis on efficiently planning the paint schemes. One aspect of this that I've had to deal with this year is the lack of availability and updates to a handful of paints in my custom color schemes. I'm going to get a lot more into this issue with my next video, more on that soon, but when it came to working on these Spires minis, I quickly realized that my color scheme needed to be updated since the brute drones I painted way back in 2021 anyways. The gold yellow burnt orange Vallejo shifter paint I used for their weapons looks great, but it wasn't the best option for all the weapons across the army. So now I'm painting the majority of weapons to have a cool grey stone look to them, utilizing Vallejo model color field blue, and I'm still using the shifter paint on things like jewelry and accessories that the fancy models are wearing. Furthermore, I needed to add a proper accent color to the palette to help the officers and characters stand out, which ended up being Vallejo game color scurvy green. And it took a lot of pondering to end up on that color choice, but all the mental energy paid off because I'm really satisfied with how it fits in with the other tones. So like I said, my next video will have a more detailed breakdown of this new army recipe, but for the time being, if you want a better look at this recent Spires painting work, I did a handful of streams throughout this project that are available to watch on the Live tab of my channel. As I'm wrapping things up on the Spires, I want to briefly mention that while I haven't uploaded much YouTube content other than the community posts and live streams for the last while, I have remained active on Patreon and have been regularly uploading vlogs there throughout this entire project. So if you're looking for more Model Mayhem and a way to support my work, please consider visiting patreon.com slash millennial model mayhem. Join the ranks of these fine sprinkles to receive exclusive benefits and be among the first to know what sort of model mayhem I have planned next. And if you wish to lend greater support for even more benefits, consider joining the Mayhem Machine Moosepilheim or the Gog Hand with Country Fried Minis, Janelle, and Sukasa WM. There was more than enough painting footage from painting the Spires minis for this video, and near the end of completing them, I made the call to do the next batch of 100 Kingdoms minis in my next video, because I have a lot more I want to say about choosing color schemes and making efficient painting plans. I felt like I needed to get my thoughts for this video off my chest sooner, which would give me more room in the next one to focus on more practical painting advice. Hopefully this future video can prevent others from having to awkwardly repaint my bases after adjusting the color schemes as I had to. 
I'm very much looking forward to sharing my tips and methodology when it comes to crafting paint schemes for both minis and larger models like Gunpla. And as you can see, I've got a pretty fun and colorful thing going on with my 100 kingdoms already. But now it's time to show off the collection of finished Spires minis. Wow, would you just get a load of that consistency? Do you get what I was saying now about how quickly done paint jobs can become greater than the sum of their parts when put together? By no means do I dislike the more intricate detail work that comes with larger display models. Those are still really satisfying in their own way. But painting an army like this has its own unique kind of satisfaction to it. Both in the execution of efficient painting and the completion of a large chunk of the backlog. There's definitely a lot of pressure to have high technical painting skills when you're a content creator, or just a painter online in general, so changing gears for this Spire's army was really refreshing. Turns out I did follow some of my own advice. For me, wargaming and painting are inseparable, and I'm happy to sacrifice some of my channel's algorithmic viability to maintain the real tangible enjoyment of things like being able to bring my custom painted army to the weekly game nights, or customizing a gunpla model for a war game, sticking it to a base and everything. I hope that no matter what your interests are, you're able to glean some useful points from what I shared today. Now, it's time for another status report in my conquest collection. Oops, I uh, bought some more, whoopsie. I've reached a point of contentment. A point that allows me to move forward in a healthy manner and continue sharing my passion for these creative hobbies. I'm gonna continue enjoying my time painting and gaming with my Conquest minis, but I'm sure after not too long I'm gonna have a hankering to go back to some Gunpla, and then I'm gonna have a hankering to go back to minis after that, and so on. I'll echo what I said in my last video, that with any given interest, it's important to craft your own enjoyment, so I wish you luck in doing the same. Aside from donating on my Patreon, there are a number of other ways to support my work in the description, such as making a one-time donation, or using that previously mentioned affiliate code MMMayhem on the Parabellum eShop. And of course, the free methods of liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing here on YouTube, and following me on the social media platforms, are also very much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching to the end of this video. I'll see you again in the content zone for what will likely be my most colorful video yet.